Hey everybody, this is Verna from Stampin' Notes. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm located in um, western New York State. I live on a farm and I'm coming to you from my studio tonight. I have some beautiful quilt style cards for you tonight. And we're going to get started in a minute. But before we do, um, I want to uh, let Bonnie know that she won. Um the for commenting sharing last week Bonnie if you would message me um I can send out your gems to you Bonnie won the red rhinestone basic jewel pack and that's so pretty and this week's uh person that if you comment and share you'll be put into a drawing to win some gems and let me grab those so you can see them they're right here in my little stash. And it's a pack of the adhesive back seasonal sequins. They come in red and green and gold. They're really pretty. And so if you'd like to um, comment and share, you will be put into a drawing for these beautiful gems. I'll set them aside for now. Hey, say, hey, let me know where you're from. Say hello. It's always fun to meet new people. And of course, say hi to old friends. And hi, Rosalie. Hi, Margaret. And thank you for sharing. Thank you for being here tonight. And what else is going on? Oh, um... If you use this host code, if you um, want to get the kit for the cards for tonight, um, they will, I'll show you what that little kit will look like for each card. So there'd be three of these in your packet. And um, there's a little packet with everything pre-cut in it for you and ready to go. And tonight is a full PDF tutorial, so the kits are only available, and the PDF tutorial is only available if you're on my team or if you place an order of $35 or more with me using host code JFV3BRA6. So that's the host code to use. And with a $35 order using this host code or more, you can get a kit for each of the cards. And if you're on my team, of course, um, they'll be, I'll upload them to my team page and that will be free there for you also. And right now is a great time to get the starter kit. Um, it's a hundred, usually $125 worth of products for uh, $99. And right now it is an awesome deal. It is $155 worth of product for $99 plus free shipping, plus a free paper pumpkin. So that is really awesome. So as some of you know, I love to quilt, and I know some of you ladies on here love to quilt. And so these are three cards that are quilt style cards. And our first one, we're gonna start with a piece of thick basic white cardstock. And we're it's four and a quarter by 11. We're gonna burnish that. And then I'm using a piece of this beautiful designer series paper. I think this is the Bows of Holly designer series paper. Yes, I did, Rosalie. That was uh, well, quite a while ago. That was fun. <laughs> um, and we've had a good time quilting together. So we've got our um, uh, designer series paper. We're going to adhere it to the front of our card base. And I'm using our uh, multi-purpose liquid glue. It's the Tombow glue that comes in the green bottle from Stampin' Up! And I've just put it into a glue bottle that has a really fine point on it. It's um, easier for me to use and doesn't get clogged as easily. Okay, so we're going to layer this on the front just like that. And now we're going to put this aside a minute and we're going to um, make our quilt effect for this card. So also um, with this card, we have a square 
right here of basic white paper. And we have some little squares that um, we're going to make a pinwheel out of. Um, have you, I'm sure some of you ladies have made a pinwheel quilt. Well, we're going to turn our card base this way with our point at the top and point at the bottom. And I've taken these little squares and I've cut them in half. These are one and three eighths inch squares cut in half. So I've cut two squares in half. And I'm going to line this up. I think I'll put a dark piece under there so you can see the white better. Let's grab, there's a scrap piece. It'll show up better and you can see what I'm doing. All right. So we're going to take this, um, our little triangle here, and notice our point is going to the right. You can start with it either way, to the right or the left. All right. Um, and we're going to just put a little adhesive on it. And now my point, I'm going to, so I'm going to, Whatever way you start with your point going, that's the way all of your, that's the direction all of your points are, you need to put all of your points um, for each piece that you put down. So, um, sorry, I'm trying to line this. You want to look at the side, your side right here, this edge right here to line that up. Okay. All right, so my point's going to the left. All right, so with the next one, I want my point going in the same direction. It's on the left side of this. So that's the same direction. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna line it up like that. Okay, and so I'm not paying attention to the center so much as I am to the edge here, this edge right here, okay? So you want that about the same distance for every little triangle that you put down. So that looks about the same. So I'm going to turn this I'm going to turn this this way, um, and let's see, no, I guess I'll leave it like that. So here's another, we want our triangle going the same way, all right, so this is going to go here, and I'm just putting little dots, because that will hold it, but it's easier to move it if I need to move it. And I'm watching my corner and my edge here, right there. So far looking really good. And I'm going to turn it and do this last one. So we want our triangle going this way. And this is our, um, I think, the Regal Color. This is Garden Green Designer Series paper from our... Um, just the regular designer series paper collection. Okay, so, um, so we're going that way. And gotta get this in the right position. All right, whoops. So you wanna pay more attention to your edge than how the center looks. The center's going to be covered. All right. Hey, Mom. You're not too late. Okay. This is going to be a pinwheel quilt card. All right. So now I'm going to bring in my scoring um, board. And this is an item that Stampin' Up! carries that you know, we don't see it a lot, but it's great if you're going to do a lot of scoring. It's a big board and it has this tool with it. 
and it has two little balls, one on each end. There's a smaller one and a larger one. Okay, and I'm going to use the smaller one. My light is reflecting there. All right, so I'm taking, I'm going to start with one of my corners. I'm going to line it right up here, um, right on the uh, this mark right. Well, let's do three and a half. Okay. And there's a little groove here. So I'm going to start in this next groove over. And I'm just going to press. And this is going to look like it's quilted. It's going to make a mark. You know how we stitch and quilt our fabric. Now I'm going to go the next little um, groove over. The same thing. And you want to push down pretty hard so you stay right in that groove. I'm not going to all the way to the end here. So, and I'm going to that one. And then this one. This one. So they're all the same distance apart. So it does look like quilting. All right. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you can see it like that. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to turn and I'm going to do the next um, section the same way. I'm just starting here, that groove, going to the next groove. And you can see I'm pushing down at the beginning just to make sure, like, see, I went off a little bit there. That's not going to show anyways, but just to make sure you're getting started right. And you have to keep pushing down on it. We'll go like this. Okay, we're going to turn it again. So now we've got this, we've got two sections done. All right. We're sticking our card tip back in that groove. Whoops. I hope I didn't mess that up too bad. Um, and then here's a groove. right there, there, and these are all going to be quilted Christmas cards. And we have one more to do, all right, and that's right here. Okay. And you just see how I went off a little bit there. Luckily, that's not going to show, but um, you just got to be careful of that. All right, so we've got our uh, main quilting done on that. It has a cool look to it. I hope you can see it. And, um, and again, if you're on here and you're just watching, say hi and let us know. Let me know where you're from. All right, so we've got one more thing to do a little bit of quilting on, and that's another um, piece of cardstock that's the same size as our little squares, okay? And on this one, we're just going to go around the very edge. So right here where it's marked at four on here, I'm going to go in just a little bit, and I'm going to turn that. Put it on the where the four is right here. I'm going and I'm gonna just make a little border around this. I'm lining it up on the four each time. <clears throat> okay, and here we go. Okay, so we have this little quilted look square. All right, so we're done with the scoring board. We'll set that down. And again, the PDF um, tutorial has all those uh, supplies in it and where you can get them from, or the item numbers and what um, catalog. All right, so now we're going to stamp this. And this stamp is from the 
Hope and Peace stamp set. It is this one right here. And it says, with love and hope. And I'm going to stamp that in red, real red ink. Okay. And we're going to, we want our, our square to be going this way with the points at the top and the bottom. Let's see if I can do this. I'm having trouble seeing it because it's white on white. Okay. All right. I hope that's centered. Yeah, I guess that's okay. With love and hope. And now we're gonna pop this onto the, our, the center of our card. And now when you line this up, well, let me put some dimensionals on the back of it. First, we'll put four on here. So I don't know if you heard at the beginning, but I the tutorial for this is a regular PDF tutorial, not just the supplies. So, but it is um, the tutorial you can get with a $35 order um, using this host code at checkout, 35 or more, and also the kits. I will send you the kits for each of these cards, all pre-cut and ready to go. And of course, it's free to my team members. Okay, so we're going to line this up, or you can buy just the tutorial too. Um, we're going to line, I'm lining this point along this edge of this designer series paper and this point along that edge. So all the points of this little square should line up with our designer series paper. Let's see here. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's a little bit um, off right here, which means I made a goof and laying it down. Not bad, but, and then we're just gonna um, put this on the center of our card. And you could add ribbon or whatever to it. Okay, so that looks about centered. And I'm gonna add some little um, rhinestones to that. I've got to grab your, my take your pick tool. Well, I don't see that. I'm not going to. So let's add a little rhinestone there. And one right here. We'll add one in each of the corners. And then this would be pretty, like if you made a whole set of note cards with it, it'd be really pretty. So there's that one. And then this one I had done earlier in all red. It says with hope and love. And it has the quilting on it. And it says, wishing you the hope and peace of Christ this season. Okay, so that's card number one. And card number two is a beautiful ornament. It could be an ornament um, that you give to someone to hang on a tree. And we're starting with two um, squares of soft succulent. All right, so I'll put this aside. Hey, Barbara. Nice to see you here. And Deborah. Great to see you gals here. 
Okay, I'm grabbing a piece of grid paper. Because we need grid paper for this one. All right. All right, so for this one, we're going to line up our points on one line. And so this point's a little bit over that line, and it's a little bit, um, let me pull this up so you can see it a little better, a little bit below this line here. Hey, Chris. All right. And now I'm going to take this one and I want to make this one, I want to be exactly centered on this. So that looks like it's about um, two, one, two. So there's two um, rows there, two rows here. And I'm going to move that just a touch that way. So when you get it, I'm just going to um, mark that. Grab a pencil. And again, you could send this as a greeting card or just an ornament. And I'm just going to mark that a little bit right there. And right there. In case it in case I lose it. I may not, but all right, so I'm just gonna put some glue in here underneath to hold that. I'm gonna line it back up. My glue's acting a little plugged or something. All right. So for this card, we're going to start. We've got um, some other smaller squares, four of each. And I'm using the painted Christmas Designer Series paper right here. I've got four of the this pattern with the beautiful pine cones and then four of Evening Evergreen. And I've die cut these with one of the squares from the Stitch Stylus Shapes dies. And this is, I think, the third largest one. Okay. Just because I like the stitching on it. The stitching um, shows all around. All right. So um, the first thing we're going to do, so we're going to be layering all eight of these on the top of this. Okay. And we're going to start with the one on the upper right here. And um, we're gonna layer it on it so just a tiny bit of the soft succulent is showing on the edge. With the first square, you want you don't want any glue here on this on the left side of it because we're gonna slide another square under that. So I'm just gonna put glue, a, a little glue, whoops, I got a different glue bottle here a little glue on the right back of the right side right here to hold it in place. All right. And we're going to put it down just like this. Okay. Now we're going to take um, an evening evergreen one and this is going to go here like that. And we're going to start this one. Um, the rest of the squares we can put adhesive all over the back like that. And you want just a little edge of your soft succulent to, to show along the edge here. So we're ready for one of the painted uh, Christmas designs. And that's going to go like this. And you could do this smaller, smaller squares to go on a card front that would um, fit in an envelope, make it a regular card and not an ornament. 
This is the evening evergreen. And that's, you just follow the pattern of your two square bases and see how this is lining up. And I love fabric. Love to, to just look at it. I love the feel of it when I'm working with it. I'm sure you gals do too. And this is going to go here. And again, just an edge, a small edge here of that soft succulent showing. I would love it if you guys made some and um, posted them. And then this one is going to go here. I almost think this pattern is card card something, the quilt pattern it for, and I can't remember the name of it for sure. Okay, so our last one is going to slide down in here. I can get that up like that. Okay. Now, I'm making this a country Christmas card, which means farm life for me, but this would be really pretty with... um pine cones on it. Um, I'm going to use the Christmas Barn Bundle, um, one of the dies from that, the barn, and make it like um, really country looking. Okay, so this has got to come in right there. Not that it will show because it's not going to. We gotta go over just a little. Okay. Oh, you like this? <laughs> it is pretty. Okay, so isn't that pretty? And you could, you know, you could put pine cones here or a bell, even. Um, before we get anything else on here, I'm gonna put a uh, punch a hole in the top so we can put ribbon through it. And I'm using the very, very best trio punch. I can't remember the name of it. I know, and I here it is. This new punch right here. So there's a um, decorative punches on here, but then there's this one for a hole, hole punch. So let's see if I can, maybe I can't fit this in here to do it. Well, maybe I'll just use a regular hole punch thing. Let me grab that. All right. So we'll go down about like that. Okay, so we've got our hole in there. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in, um, this is the Christmas barn bundle. Here's the dies, the barn dies, and there's a barn, and there's a silo, there's a, people that are riding on the sleigh, a wreath, a tree, the silo fence, all kinds of neat dies in there. Thanks, Margaret. All right, and so here's my Stamparatus. And this is the Christmas Barn stamp set. Um, sorry about the glare. Has some nice sentiments. Uh, the horse and sleigh, the barn, the wreath, uh, fence, footprints or snowdrift, and a tree. So it's a really nice set. And you don't have to use it just for Christmas cards. You could, I was going to make a fall card for today and 
just got in the quilting card mood and didn't go with a fall look. So I'm using this because um, there's so many fine lines in this stamp and I just want to make sure I get a good uh, image. And uh, so with the Stamparatus you can re-stamp because these magnets hold this um, your paper down. And this is the craft card stock, which I love. And I'm going to bring in my black um, ink pad, which I had over here. And I'll grab my other one. I'm not seeing it. Okay, so um, I'm going to put this ink pad under here to hold that up. And I'm just going to ink up my farm stamp. Okay. And then we're going to put that down and stamp our image. Okay, see that? This is why we use the Stamparatus. Oh, there's my good ink. I think this pat ink pad is a little dry too. Okay, this pad I think is a little juicier, so. Let's try this again. Oh, we still got a spot that's not inking good there. Almost. Right up in the air. Okay, so I don't like how dark that is. Um, I'm going to leave it for now. And maybe this pad, maybe I need to change the pad because when you're stamping with photopolymer stamps, you need to have, um, there's a pad that comes with this. You need to use that with it uh, to get a better stamped image. If you're using um, the cling stamps, you take this pad out of here. All right, I'm going to wipe this off before the ink sets in there. So um, I would take this over and die cut it, and I've already done that. I stamped one up here. I have another one, and it's right here. And then um, there's a little wreath too somewhere here. Let's see if I, well, I'm not seeing it at the moment. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm gonna do about this barn. Uh, and make it look more wintry. So I'm using the Craft White or the Whisper White Craft ink here. And this is a really old ink pad, but it seems to work okay. And I'm going to use a Stampin' Blend marker. I don't know if you guys have used these. These are great for um, coloring with. Um, Sorry, gotta move that out of the way. Uh, coloring and blending with your ink pads without using a stamp. And you can get color onto um, images. So I'm just taking the end of it and it has some kind of fluid in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of snow to our barn roof. And you'll need to do um, several 
layers of this because when it dries, it gets pretty light. I know in the winter, um, there's not a lot of milking farms left in our area now, but oh my gosh, I remember those cold winter mornings getting up to milk cows. I think the coldest morning we had here when we were milking cows was, oh, minus 32. We'll put a little bit of snow over over our window here. And I did try to use that puff paint, but I didn't like the way it looked when I, you're supposed to put it on and then heat it up and it, I just didn't like the look of it. Maybe you guys know how to use it better. We're gonna put a little bit over the windows here and the doorway. Those cold, the milking parlor would be so warm when you're working in there milking cows and then you go outside to the go, go to the house and it's so bitter. We'll put a little snow there. A little bit of snow on the windows here. And we're gonna paint this down here. So when you use these Stampin' Blends, you can see I've got red coloring on the end of this one, which means I used it with red ink. And um, when you're done with whatever color you're using with it, you just brush it off like this. And then it's ready to go again. And we're gonna make um, some little drifts here against the door. And you just keep going like this and add the snow. I think this ink is this pad is drying up. And you can see it would take a couple layers of this. Painting it on like that. All right. I've got a refill here and I'm just gonna dab it on there and dip in that so it goes along faster here. Okay. And we'll make it so it's up against the door a little bit on the bottom there. All right, so that looks a little more, a little more wintry. Did any of you ever have to, sometimes in the old farmhouse, we used to have to turn on the sink and let it drip at night so it wouldn't freeze, the pipes wouldn't freeze. Okay. I think I need to get a new craft white craft ink pad.
And we'll just do a little more right here. Anyway, so, and then you're going to just wipe this off until you don't see any more ink. Blunt that in a little bit. So there's our barn. And then, so the final... We would pop that on here with dimensionals, and I don't have my wreath, so I wanted to show you this wreath. I cut one, and it's probably on the floor here. But um, So the die-cut wreath was stamped in green. Can you see that? And then I took a um, Stampin' Write marker, real red, and just colored the bow and put that on um, the barn. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back of this and pop it on the one we made here. But before we do that, we need to stamp the back and put a sentiment on the back of it. Okay, we'll get these off here. Then there was always the mama cow that delivered during bitter cold and we always hoped the calf was all right in the barn on those cold blustery nights. All right, so we've got our barn ready, and we're going to stamp the sentiment on the back of this. And we're going to stamp, um, Merry Christmas to you, you and yours. And this is from the Christmas Barn stamp set. And I'm going to use Evening Evergreen. We'll stamp it right on the back here, and then you could sign it just like that. Let's turn this over. We'll add our barn, and when I find the wreath, I'll add the wreath. We'll add our barn to the center. Let's see if that looks centered. Maybe... Just a tad, maybe like that. And let's get some ribbon. This is our vanilla and gold ribbon. And then you can just make a knot at the top. So you, it could be hung on a tree or somewhere else in the house. And there's that. So there's, it would look like this right here with a wreath on it. Okay. Hey, Jerry. Oh, that you have to fill the pad yourself. Well, you can tell it's been a long time since I've, gotten mine margaret all right our last card is a lot of fun and this is a herringbone card herringbone quilt card so we're going to start with a piece of uh, basic white that's five and a quarter by four and before we do that i'm going to cut some random strips of glimmer paper and you want to cut between um, a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, and a half an inch, half of an inch. All right, so let's do, this is the white, or the white, the red, it comes with white. I'm doing some half-inch strips.
It comes six by six with a, a shiny white too. I probably don't need this many, but And then we have like a vanilla. And this is the, sh the glimmer paper that comes with Evening Evergreen, a vanilla and gold, I believe. So we're gonna cut some, um, I'm gonna use this side because there's, they're thin strips and they're harder to um, hold when you're cutting, if you're doing it over here. So we're going to cut it on the right instead of the left. These are about one quarter inch strips. We'll do like three of these. Okay. And then we'll do a couple of the evening evergreen. Let's do these in three eighths of an inch. Isn't this pretty? So lovely and beautiful. Yeah, I agree, Margaret. Okay, now we're ready to roll. Put that over there, primer over there. Bring our strips in. And I have some gold ones too, some shorter ones. All right, so five and a quarter by four inch piece of basic white card stock. We're gonna start with that. Chris Wolcott, I think you made one similar to this a while ago. This is, I love doing this. All right, so we're going to take, oh, we need an adhesive sheet. So our adhesive sheet comes in a big sheet like this, and I'll show you how to use this for this project. We're going to cut this the same as our cardstock, five and a quarter by four inches, right? And in this little, between these sheets is adhesive. So we're gonna, you will see one side has where you can peel it. All right, so that's sticky. We're gonna lay this on top of our basic white five and a quarter by four inch piece. I'm going to get it on there and then I'm going to take this other side off. I'm going to take my bone folder and just push that down. All right. And it doesn't matter if it's not even because we're going to trim some of this. All right. Um, so now we're going to take this is. We're going to take this side off here so it's the sticky side is available to put our beautiful glimmer strips in. Okay. So this is all very sticky right now. Now you can just glue them on without using the adhesive sheet, but it's for me, it's easier to use the adhesive sheet. So I'm going to start going um, vertically across my paper like that. And I'm going to start building now. I'm going to take, and you want to make sure your ends are straight and you're going to put it right up to the edge of your other um, glimmer paper. I'm gonna put one there, and then I'm gonna put, let's do, now that's not straight, so I'm gonna uh, cut that off. Okay. 
All right. Let's do about like that. Okay. And we're going to be trimming these off. So I'm going to just leave them for now. So these are the directions I'm going to go be going. This section is going to all go this way and you can do whatever you want. This section is going to be strips going this way. This is going to be strips going up and down and this is going to be strips going up and down. And again, you can change that up however you would like. And I'm randomly putting colors. I'm going to tear that off if it's really long. Okay, I'm going to move that up a little bit. And you want to make sure you're right, you're not leaving any spaces. Now, if you don't use the adhesive sheet and you're just using glue, you could leave um, spaces in between, which gives it a neat look because it um, would be white or whatever the color of your cardstock is. Put that down like that. And you just start filling in gaps. And it's really fun to do. It's fun to design. And, and it's really pretty. You don't have to use glimmer paper. You know, it's pretty with regular um, cardstock also. Let's do a green here. You could do it so this was gold and I mean you could make it the exact same um, in your sequence of colors if you wanted to. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever you would like to do. And again, if you order from me, then I will send you the um, all of the pre cut card stock and paper that you need to make each card and you want to use this host code when you order oh we'll make this one green and green going this way Here's a, we'll do a gold. My floors are a mess. Little tiny pieces of paper stuff. All over the place. Okay, we'll just put that little one there. It's probably going to get trimmed off anyways. But we'll put it there to cover it. beautiful today and the hills are just gorgeous the colors even though they're they're muted they're just beautiful all right and let's do 
We can't do that. We'll do a gold here. And a green. Now see, I should have gotten up a little farther right there. Okay, let's see here. Let's do a green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, Chris. You you posted a beautiful one a while ago. I remember that. It was gorgeous. Um, we'll just do a little gold here that's probably going to get axed off. And let's do, we'll make this gold right here. Okay, so basically this whole thing is covered. We're going to turn it over. If I can get it up. Okay, and we're just going to take scissors and trim this off. Right around the edge. Like this. And I'm not going to be real fussy about it because I'm going to go in and trim it with my trimmer. Okay. We'll get rid of all these. All right. Okay, so this is what our front will um, look like. And I'm going to bring my trimmer in. And I'm going to cut this down so it'll fit um, inside my this die cut right here. This is from the Scallop Contours dies. It's the largest die. All right, so we're going to cut it down and... So four and five eighths by three and three eighths. Four and five eighths. Now I'm gonna just I want to cut a little bit off every side. So I'm gonna do that first. So I'm not doing it exact yet. And you can save these strips to use for the inside of your card if you want to. That's not sticking. I've got to put some glue there. Okay, so this will trim down. This will trim down. All right, so this should fit inside of our um, scallop die cut. All right. Pretty, huh? We'll get a little tombow on the back. And center this on there. Okay, and now we're gonna add our, we've got a piece of evening evergreen card stock here. And we're gonna lay this on that. Adhere it to it.
Okay. This needs to slide over just a tad. Thanks, Margaret. Okay, so um, I've got a very thin strip of cardstock here, um, thin enough to fit on here, and I'm going to stamp my sentiment on that. And looking for here it is. I'm using the same uh, Merry Christmas to you and yours. And it would be pretty to do it in gold glitter. I'm not going to do that tonight, but it would be pretty on that card. And I'm using Evening Evergreen, and this is from the Christmas Barn Bundle. And that did not come out good. Um, I'm going to grab my mat. Let's see if this will come out better on this. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we're going to bring the card back in. I'm going to trim this down about like that and put it on dimensionals. They just fit on there. Our next stamping get together at the Legion in Canisteo will be Saturday, November 12th. It runs from 10 to 3. And you don't have to be there the whole time. You can stop whenever and make your cards. We're doing 12 cards and a, a 3D item, uh, Christmas cards. And or if you can't if you can't stay long, you could do your stamping and then um, put them together at home. It's $38. And I'll be sending out a sign up for that. I've got to add a bow to that. We'd love to have you be a part of that. That is Saturday, November 12th. Okay. And we need to cut our tails a little bit here. And we need a glue dot. All right, I'm going to put it right on the edge there. I kind of rolled it up in my fingers to make it tiny. So that says Merry Christmas to you and yours. All right, so let's take a look at the cards. We have this one that has the quilting. Um, you probably can't see it very good there. We have our ornament slash card. And... We have this one here. I don't know what I did with the ornament card. It's here somewhere. Um, so if you're interested in these, you can, if you would like the kit, um, all you have to do is place an order of $35 or more in my online star store using this host code between now and Sunday at midnight. So I hope you've enjoyed these and take care and I'll be back next week.